CMake. If you only know one build system, it has to be CMake. CMake is the most widespread C++ build system and you can find it everywhere. I think it's a quasi standard for most of the project. Um, the initial setup for the small projects is quite easy and most IDEs offer support. So let's have a look and start with CMake. Hi, my name is Zan and welcome to my channel. So the first thing that we need to do is to install or get CMake. So either go to the home page and download it or use the package manager of your choice to install it. So in my case, because I run Ubuntu, I use sudo apt-get and use install for CMake and it will install all the packages that I need. And we're already done. Then the first thing that we will have is a simple example. The simple example, it just consists of a main.cpp that we want to build. This one is just including IO stream and outputting to the console, doing nothing more. So what we need to create here alongside our source file is a file cmake lists.txt. The file has to be named exactly like this because cmake always recognizes these specific files. So let's have a look at the inside of this file. What we need to do here is to specify a minimum required version of CMake itself. Additionally, we need to give our project a specific name and then we can add a executable to our project and specify which source file should be used to compile our project. So that's already it. That's everything that we need to do here. And now we need to build this. So it's best practice to create a build directory alongside your source code. So not inside your source, but alongside. So we're going to do that. So we will make dear something called build. Then we switch to the build directory. And here in the build directory, we will now call the CMake command. The CMake command itself is just CMake dot dot, which means that inside this directory we want to run CMake, but we want to run CMake using the CMake list that is on top of that, so in this directory, because as you can see here, the CMake lists file is inside the simple and not inside the build folder. So we're going to run this command, and then we see it has done something. Very important for CMake is that it's a multi-step build process. So you have basically two steps. The first step that I did now is the configuration of your project. And the second step is then the building of your project. So most advanced build systems have this generation and then creation of your program, which makes the rebuilding much, much faster. So we have now configured our project and now we want to build that. And to do that, we will use CMake minus minus build. And we want to build whatever is in our current build directory already configured. That's why we use the dot. And here we see we have now compiled our file and we have now an executable inside our build. And we can run that one by using the command. So it will be named after whatever we gave it here uh, as a name. So in this case, it's simple. And here we see we have already the output. So let's have a look at a more complex example. Here we see that we have a file uh, that is including several header files from different classes and also using them inside. So we do have three CPP files and two header files to run this complete program. The CMakes list for this uh, looks a little bit different and here we will walk through slowly. So at the beginning, we can choose different flags for our program. So the flags, they will be passed to the compiler or they even might um, say CMake what the compiler is. So for instance, here I'm choosing now a different compiler, which is a Clang++ in this case. I am specifying the, CMA, or this, uh, the C++ standard that I want to use by 11. And I also say that it has to be exactly the standard. 
The executable itself is a little bit more easy, um, so nothing too fancy here. We just have three different files, so no comma separation, uh, just three, just a list of three different names of those files, and CMake will already do the correct job. If we want to build this again, what we need to do is that we need to create the build folder again, so MKD build, then we can swap to that one. And here we run again CMake and then use uh, the CMake list that is inside the complex folder. So here we see now the compiler identification for the C++ compiler has already been changed to Clang 13. So this is pretty nice. We wanted to have that. And we can now just build this again by using C CMake minus minus build and the dot. Here we see we have now three different uh, files that we wanted to compile. Those files have been compiled and they are getting linked correctly. So if we now change a single one of those files, CMake will know which uh, files it needs to recompile. So for instance, in line.cpp, if I add here a useless space at the end and I run the command to build it again, it will only recompile line.cpp and link the executable afterwards because it knows it from its dependency tree. If we have now a look at the dependency tree, we can find it inside the build directory that we have created. So we see here is a lot inside. There are some CMake files, some cache files, the executable that I built, um, some install files, and a make file, which is kind of interesting. This make file is created by CMake and it represents the back end of the build system in, in our case, which means that the make file itself, so if you need to write this by hand, uh, you see it's, it's a lot of stuff that's already inside, so you definitely don't want to write this by hand, but CMake will do it for you. And this is exactly the reason why uh, some people then said, if you don't need to understand what's inside here, why not use something that is very, very fast that you don't need to understand at all? So you can choose a different backend for your build system. So for CMake in this case, you can choose a different backend by passing it during the first initialization of CMake. So during the configure stage, you can pass the backend that you want to use. The default backend for CMake is the make file. So it will create Unix makes fi make files because this is just the default. So if we now want to use a different generator, we can do it by using the following. So first we need to clean everything that is here. So just clean the build folder because otherwise, yeah, there's just too much stuff inside and we start from a blank. So we need cmake dot dot and we can with minus g pass a different generator and here i would recommend on using ninja ninja i think is the fastest build uh, tool that you can have and i have had great experience with ninja so for me it's basically the default if, if i can use ninja i will always use ninja and here we see uh, we have now created it everything's all right uh, apparently it did work out and if we now build it using again the cmake minus minus build command we see that this one here now looks different than this one because we have chosen a different backend so if we now look in the build files we will have here now no make file but ninja files so there are lots of backends that you can choose some of them are, for instance, the Visual Studio Code. Uh, some of them are um, Microsoft solution files or um, yeah, whatever you can have. And by using just minus G or minus minus help, you can also find out uh, which possibilities for generators you have. So for instance, here it shows you, you have Unix make files, Ninja, code blocks, 
um, and even some of the Eclipse or Kate, so depending on your IDE, uh, whatever they support, because sometimes they have a specific flavor to their files. While I personally think that CMake is great to get started, and it's definitely the most widespread build tool, there are still some caveats for CMake itself, because CMake offers so many capabilities that usually there's no single way of achieving a specific result. So this means that if you look at the CMake project that you haven't written yourself, most likely uh, it is using some stuff that you don't know or having some dependencies that are hard for you to understand. And getting into a different CMake project is always a challenge. So keep that in mind if you want to go with CMake. It is easy to learn, but very hard to master. But I mean, that's, that's it. So that's all for today. Uh, thanks for watching. Turn on your machine and get started. And if you enjoyed the content, please subscribe.